Welcome back all, it's Daz from Motoro Technique. So this week I'm gonna dive back into some more train controller type videos. What we're gonna look at doing is how I've constructed what I'm calling turnout lock. So I will put a caveat over the top of this. This is not totally all my work. I did not come up with this design idea. And a big shout out to ABR Motor Works. Predominantly their products are 3D print, 3D printed items and also laser cut kits. They will ship anywhere around the world. I'll put the, the link to the code below. It is case specific, so make sure you do get it right. So product of the week, I'm just gonna have a quick look. I'm gonna look at getting one of these is the model, model railway jigs, which is a great little idea for if you wanna, well, obviously when you're, you're painting various 3D printed or detail parts. So big shout out to all my Patreons out there for helping me with the channel without your gracious support. I wouldn't be able to produce videos at all at this point in time. So without further ado, let's get started. MRT Scale Prints, helping you to add realism to your model railway. We are producing craftsman quality prints in various scales, including HO, O and N scales. We are proudly Australian owned and operated. www.modelrailwaytechniques.com So basically in short, what a turnout lock is, and you'll see some of them filtering through on the, the back of the screen here, is when schedules are running, it will lock the turnout. The locks will only turn on during certain circumstances in the trigger, and they'll honestly turn off under certain circumstances with the trigger. So where we use these are is obviously for scheduling. So when the trains are running on either automatic or manual schedules, the locks will turn on predominantly so we don't release turnouts from underneath long trains so i appreciate there's uh, rules in train controller for those of you who have dived into them for not releasing trains under not releasing blocks and routes under long trains i've found that problematic for my use like with all things train controller there is many many ways you can skin the cat so to speak and achieve what you want to achieve so some of you might be thinking why don't you just put resistor wheels on and you're probably correct however i've found that very problematic for i have era one and two um european stock which has metal treads on the wheels but as most of the time uh, they have like plastic spokes which causes a lot of issues that i find with trying to get reliable resistor wheel sets on on your wheels Bit of a contentious issue as well. Some of you might be thinking who maybe don't understand train controller as much is why don't you just put the, the turnouts as part of the block and it'll just lock it down that way. Well, in short, that's not possible um, under train controller. It's obviously been discussed very, very vehemently on, on the forum, but it's this program's designed that the, the turnouts between the blocks are part of the route, not they don't want to, um, it's not designed to be part of the block. However, you can put detection within your turnout. So without further ado, let's get into the video and I'll show you what I'm talking about. What I'll quickly do, I'll show you through how this all works. So we'll just quickly go up into the simulator mode. So I'll just do a quick auto schedule by drag and drop. And I'll explain all the components. All right, so the, the train has now gone off on its schedule. So you can see the turnout lock there has gone on. And then we'll just come down to this little screen here. So basically what we're looking for is the arrive flag to come on. And so that's one of the, the ways that this lock will turn off. So this might take a little bit of time just because it's in simulator mode. So, And you can see that that turn lock, turnout lock has now come off. What we'll have a quick look at is how the, the lock is actually constructed. So first thing we need to do with all things train control, we need to go to edit mode. If it'll let me do that. And we'll just go and quickly have a look at one of the locks. So in short, these locks 
are two aspect signals. So the reason why we use the two aspect signal is so we can use the, the triggers. So basically an on and off, and I'll go through all that in a sec. So don't need to worry about the connection tab because we're not actually connecting this physically to anything. And what we've done in the, we have actually edited the little picture to make it look like a little lock. And also at this point, we are not worrying about any of the conditions. So what we're going to quickly do is have physically have a, a look at the elements of this lock. So the first thing we will go and have a look at is the lock itself. So we'll have a look at this lock here. We'll go into edit mode first. And then we'll have a look at lock 112, 113, which corresponds to turnouts 112, 113. So we'll look at what triggers it to start with. So in its off state, there's nothing that triggers it. However, when we go into the trigger of the lock, this is what we get. So let's just explain, expand this out just a little bit more so it's easier to see. So We'll start at the top. So we start with an AND statement and then OR. So the reason why then the physical lock is in the logic, the logic string there, is purely we want the lock to stay on even if these conditions here change or are not met. So for it to turn on, it needs certain conditions to be, to be met to turn it on. But then once, say like this here, at some point, when that train leaves BS block BS1, that signal will may go red or grey. That's the calculator block signal. But we want the lock to stay on unless the second part of this is the not and groups, which will effectively turn it off. We'll start with an outbound train out of BS1, which is a freight train. So the first thing we need is, let me bring that over here. So the first thing we need is, is the block BS1 to be a current block. So a current block within the train controller world is a train physically in it. So that is currently like it is now, that's a current block. And also then we need the green calculated block signal to be green and traveling to the right or what or westbound on my layout and then once that those two because they're both and so we need both of them to be current or so to be to be correct or true for the lock to turn on and as i'll show you in a, in a sec so the reason why when these so the second part of the the logic string here we won't go into some of the more complicated ones, but we'll just keep it nice and simple. So we'll start with this this top one here. So when we not end, so when we've got the BS out arrive flagman, and I'll show you that very soon, the fires off, it will turn the lock lock off because we don't a not end, meaning when this is on, the lock is off effectively. So it turns it off. And these these bottom ones down here, so these are purely how it integrates with the lock here of the slip switch. So not and statement again. So when currently the way that that slip switch is there, and once we get a BS arrive flag that fires off, which the train is going to inbound to the station, that means that lock here will physically be off. So this is sort of how we get these two locks to integrate with each other. And you'll find when trains come in and out through here, you'll see both these, uh, both these locks will simultaneously turn on. Also down the bottom here, we've got a clear turnout locks. What I have had to do is I've set up a little clear turnout locks after edit mode. So what sometimes happens if you got if you got a schedule running and you stop it which will leave the lock on unless one of these criteria are met 
the locks will stay on as well. And sometimes that can be a little bit problematic, uh, being that you don't want the locks to stay on for, for whatever reason. So it's just a matter of we need to be able to turn them on and off. And I'll probably just quickly show you what that, how that works. So I can physically turn the locks on, not that you would do it this way. And just keep your eye on up here and I'll go and turn the button. So lock is on and I can physically turn them off when I'm coming in and out of edit mode. The other aspect to this locking system is the arrive flag. So I'll just quickly, I'll just take you through to one of the, the, the blocks that don't, doesn't have a lot of icons on it. So the arrive flag is, so I'll have a quick look at the arrive flag. So it's trigger is primarily now the reason the reason why we, we've got these here we do use this for other types of functions so where we just want to get outside of just using the stop marker for it for the termination of these locks so you can see the trigger for the on state of this flagman is is an end and an or so that's for when the stop marker on BS in stop, which is sort of the left-hand side of this block, fires off and the stop marker activates uh, via the train. This up here, the reset arrive flags is a little bit similar when you come in and out of edit mode. We've set up a little um, clearance, clearance button here that helps us, it uh, clears all the, the stop markers. Sorry, all the arrival flags. So another aspect of this turnout lock is each turnout then also has to have a condition on it. So the reason why that is the case, so this is sort of how it works. So if the lock is currently on, the condition's not met, so you can't actually control the, that turnout at all. So that's the, the straight ahead route that we're, we're talking about here, and it's exactly the same for the diversion or diverting route to the right. So that just means, so if the turnout locks are off, you can still use the turnout. So if you have a look, if I actually went and turn that to the lock position to be able to use it, you'll find, and I'll just I'll try to blow this up a little bit better. I'll get out of edit mode. You won't be able to turn it back. See how it's, I can't physically turn it to the diversion route. That's because I've changed that turnout lock. So in essence, that's how the turnout lock works. So by the lock turning on, and that coupled with the conditions in the conditions tab of each individual turnout, let's try and control and know whether we can actually physically control the turnout or not control the turnout purely by whether that lock is on or off. So that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching. Pose a few questions to you if you want to put in the comments below. Would you use turnout locks similar to this or what are you using to control your turnouts from switching from underneath long trains during your schedules? Love to hear from anyone who wants to reach out regarding anything regarding train controller. The world is your oyster when it comes to this Make program. Sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.